What's up my Central Unit, it's the Central Man here, so back again with another classic WWE pay-per-view review. This time I'm going to review WWE Capital Punishment 2011. This show was at the Ferry Zahn Center, right now it's called the Capital One Arena in the American capital of Washington DC on the 19th of June 2011. The attendance for the show was 9,850 and the, the pay-per-view buy rate for this a pay-per-view was 170,000. This is the first and only capital punishment pay-per-view in WWE history. I think this pay-per-view is built around R-Truth. This is basically R-Truth's first and only uh, WWE title match. I'll get to that match later on in this review. Anyway, um, you know, and this, you know, the, the set of Capital Punishment was good, man. You know, they had the, the White House set. That was really cool. You know, looking back, you know, six years ago to that WWE to compare to the WWE right now, you see, you see the, the same old Triton song you see on Raw and SmackDown. Anyway, so the commentators for the show are Michael Cole, Jerry the King Lawler, and Booker T. Booker T, nah, he was never that good on, on commentary. You know, like in 2011, he was doing the whole uh, Fave 5, you know, Every time on SmackDown, on pay-per-views, you know, I think he's doing shows on the, he's just doing, he's showing, he's only appearance on pre-shows on every time the pay-per-views around, you know, at least he's still on WWE television. Anyway, let's do the uh, quick results in the dark match. The dark match was, we've got uh, Santino Morella and Vladimir Kozlov. Defeating Heath Slater and Justin Gabriel. The first match to kick off, Capital Punishment 2011. Uh, we got the United States title match between Kofi Kingston versus Dolph Ziggler with Vicky Guerrero in Dolph's corner. Dolph had a change in 2011 by his uh, look. You know, he kind of, you know, had a, a haircut. You know, he dyed his hair brown. And then later on, he kind of dyed his hair back to bleach blonde. Yeah, this match was really good. A good opener, like back and forth. And like, like right now, the, you know, two guys are not really relevant. You know, Kofi is kind of relevant, but he's kind of like the whole stuff with the New Day thing. It was getting stale. As for Dolph, you know, he's dubbed as, you know, he's a ripper. He, they dubbed, you know, they're trying to make him dove into a, you know, Shawn Michaels knockoff, you know. That is, that's then, but, not not then, but that is now, but then, you know, they both are really relevant. You know, anyway, so, back, really back and forth, you know, I think Dolph did a finisher. You know, finisher, the famouser. You know, basically some people for years comparing, uh, Do really c comparing Dolph Ziggler, he's a, a Billy Gunn knockoff. I think he did on Kofi. Kofi is sometimes kind of teasing an, uh, a trouble in paradise um, onto Dolph. I think Dolph, you know, Dolph really, you know, I'm glad he did, didn't see it in this match. I think like Dolph kicked out the SOS, you know, that's Kofi's finisher. Basically like, um, I think it's a Russian leg sweep uh, roll up. That's the SOF, that's Kofi's second finisher. Um, you know, he did you know you know, you know, Dolph did multiple like elbows to Kofi's chest. In the end had Ficky kinda like uh scratched the eyes of Kofi Kingston. Dolph locked uh Kofi with the sleeper hold and Kofi passed out and Dolph Sickler won the United States uh championship. And this is his first United States uh championship in his career so far. Um, you know, you know, it's really funny, like, like, the previous year, you know, Kofi defeated, uh, not Kofi, uh, Dolph defeated Kofi at SummerSlam in 2010 to win the IC title, and fast forward, um, one year later at Capital Punishment, he beat Kofi again, this time for the United States title. Yeah, he, he had a matches in, like, in 2019, but I'm not gonna get, get to that, match, talk about that match from 2019, but, yeah, this is... You know, it's a good win for Dolph, you know, and really Dolph Ziggler hold on to the belt until the end of 2011, until dropping the belt to Zack Ryder, you know, so, yeah, good opener to kick off Capital Punishment 2011. Anyway, in the next match, we've got The Miz taking on Alex Riley. Um, this, this is the grudge match because, you know, for the start, you know, like in 2010, you know, the Alex Riley, you know, debuted in... On NXT, the game show version of NXT as the Miz rookie, and then after season two was finished, it, Riley was on WWE tele, uh, television on a regular basis as the Miz is basically his underling, his lackey. You know, he's holding like the briefcase, 
and then let's fast, you know, and and, and you know, until the the star of Miz's WWE title run, and then like let's fast forward in 2011, you know, you know, you know, basically like May, uh, Alex Riley cast the Miz the to win the WWE title. Uh, this is after Miz lost the title to John Cena at Extreme Rules. They had the rematch on Raw that uh, Miz won. Unfortunately, it was overruled because of um. Because you know Alex Riley interfered, and then they had the ma they had the rubber match at uh, Over the Limit. You know Miz Kali won the title. Unfortunately, it was overruled. The match restarted because they did the whole Rock and Mankind match from you know the I Quit match from Royal Rum Royal Rumble from 1999. So basically, you know Miz fired Riley because he cost the Miz the WWE title on two separate occasions. So anyway. And this, you know, this match was good, you know, you know, and also Miz was carrying like a briefcase. This is, used to be when Miz won the Money in the Bank ladder match um, from uh, 2010. Unfortunately, he was a point holding it because he's no longer the um, the winner of Money in the Bank. Anyway, so this was a really brief really physical, like, for all the, like, bulks of the match, you basically had Miz, um, you know, beating, you know, putting, like, Bullying Alex Riley, punching him. He, I think he called him a bag boy because you're nothing without me. And then you got like um, you know, you know, you know, you had Alex Riley got his comeback and he confronted Michael Cole. And this is this is one thing about Michael Cole in this whole show and throughout his uh, like hill run in the company. Like one moment, like he's the uh, like a heel, the heel announcer, and then all of a sudden after the next match, he's gone back to has the straight play-by-play -play announcer. It's like. So it's so it's very confusing. Anyway, so yeah, Michael Cole shouting at Alex Riley, you like the Miz has nurture you, you know, he treat you like a father figure. And now yeah, yeah, basically Riley pushed a uh, really drag, really drag Michael Cole out of the um the announce table. Um, and then you know Miz was about to hit Alex Riley with the silver briefcase, but the referee stopped him. In the end, um, Riley hit the lifted DDT to win this match, and it makes sense because the the show's in Washington. Alex Riley, he's the hometown boy. You know, it being clean, it's a damn shame that like Alex Riley's career never went anywhere after that. You know, yeah, there's rumors like um, like there's yeah, there's rumors like you know he got injured. You know, he's injury prone and also like rumors like John Cena buried him backstage. You know, another story for another time. Anyway, the next match we've got, um, you know, Alberto Del Rio versus The Big Show. This took place on a Raw. This is the Raw after Over the Limit when, the, you, know, you know, you know, Big Show and Kane lost the tag team titles to the new Nexus. That is Michael McGillicutty and the, the Big Show, uh, not The Big Show, uh, David Otonga, sorry. And this was before they had, they were sitting on Del Rio's car, like throwing, pushing uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, you know, Del Rio's ring, uh, ring announcer over, and Del Rio was shouting to Big Show and Kane in Spanish. And then after that, you know, Del Rio smacked the Big Show, the ran, ran out, and then you know, basically Big Show got accident, got run over by the car of Del Rio that was dro driven by Ricardo Rodriguez, and then. And then uh, the go home show, you know, after the match between Del Rio and Kane was ending the disqualification, you had Big Show came at, came to the rescue, beat down Del Rio. He basically beat down Ricardo Rodriguez. You know, he you know knocked him out. Then he had the match on. Um, and they had the like going chasing Del Rio on a go home show to SmackDown. We'll get to it a little shortly. The start of the, the start of the match had Big Show attack uh, Del Rio the start and this was the first, I think it's the first time without uh, Ricardo Rodriguez throughout the whole time you had uh, Ricardo Rodriguez doing the announcing for Del Rio but unfortunately you know he got attacked by the Big Show on the go home show to Raw the Raw All Stars um Raw anyway yeah Big Show attacked Del Rio from the really the start of this match attacking him and then you got Mark Henry attacked the Big Show and the, uh, you know, on the SmackDown, the goal on show to the SmackDown, Mark Henry, uh, not Mark Henry, but Big Show attacked Mark Henry. This was developing the rivalry between Big Show and Mark Henry. Mark Henry attacked Big Show afterwards, hit him with the world's strongest slam, kind of like grabbed his injured leg, slammed it on the floor, and then the match started. Yeah, this match was not that good, to be honest. Like, the, you know, bit, uh, Del Rio was working on the injured leg of the Big Show, locked him in a type of... Uh, knee bar. The, the Michael Cole called it the um, the cross leg breaker. You know, Big Show, uh, you know, um, 
reached the, uh, the ropes. Unfortunately, Big Show's leg kind of gave out. He didn't unable to continue, and yep, Del Rio won this match. They had better matches in 2013, but in 2011, not so good. And, you know, and then this is set up the Big Show Mark Henry match at Money in the Bank the following month. Anyway, the next match, we got the um, Intercontinental title match between Wade Barrett and Ezekiel Jackson. And this is, bit of, this is Wade Barrett's first pay-per-view match on his own because he debuted in 2010, you know, part of the Nexus, started in 2011. You know, formed the core. Unfortunately, the core was no more. They kick Ezekiel Jackson out of the group. Then, uh, I think it was the Go Home Show to SmackDown. You had the six-man tag team match between, you know, basically Barrett and the, really the third, the third quarter of the core taking on Seiko Jackson, Big Show, and Kane. Basically, had Big Sh uh, basically Barrett uh, turned on both Sl Slater and Gabriel, ditched them, and then, you know, like, you know, and afterwards, you know, the, you know, the core was no more. The title, uh, Way Barrett's bullshit. Anyway, and then, you know, the, you know, you had, Barrett was kind of like bashing the Americans, like talking about like the was it the educational uh, s system. In twenty years' time, people are going to speak Chinese. <laughs> so you know the, the guy chant they were chanting USA. Um, for, yeah, this match between Barrett and Jackson it was all right, but the problem is you know the people were chanting USA. Unfortunately, Barrett's from England, and Siegel Jackson is from Guyana. Yeah, it was all right. You know, you know, Barrett had some offense. Hit to, hit him with the uh, was it the winds of blown, whatever it's called, the sidewalk slam. Jackson kicked out the waist slam. He's and he got his comeback. Hit him with the clothesline, scoop slam, scoot slam, scoot slam. Hit the torture rack. Barrett taps out. Seeker Jackson won the the intercontinental title. This is his first and only time he won the IC title. I'm really his first and only time he won. You know, yeah, he won the ECW title, but. Yeah, this is the first in time he won first and only time he become Intercontinental Champion. Afterwards, you had Jerry the King Lawler cut uh, really cut a post interview with Ezekiel, and Ezekiel says I've established his his own um, independence. You know, you know. Afterwards, uh, you know this. Uh, yeah, in a unfortunately, his reign never lasts long because he I think it was next month he dropped the belt to I think it was July or August. Yeah, he dropped the belt to Cody Rhodes. Anyway. The next match we got CM Punk versus Rey Mysterio, and this was really good. I think the problem is, yeah, there was lack of a build. It's basically like a match added to the last minute, but it's a really good match. Throughout the whole board, the bulk of the match, basically Punk was locking in submission holds on Mysterio, like the abdominal stretch, you know, the scissor, look, the scissor lock on Mysterio. Mysterio hit like a mini six one nine onto Punk on the ring pose. You kind of. He did it while on the ring post slash the ring apron. Uh, he did not. Yeah, Punk hit. Uh, Mysterio hit the um the moon salt. Uh, I think he was stopping CM Punk's. Um, no, Punk stopping Mysterio's repertoire, his high flying repertoire. Um, I think he Punk. I think Mysterio got out got out of the S. Uh, the, he was going for the GTS, but Mysterio counted it into the six one nine. But instead, Punk countered it, managed to hit the GTS. On onto Mysterio to win this match, and I think this is the first and last time they had a one-on-one -on -one match. So, anyway, so it's a good win for Myster uh, for Punk, and really, and here's the fact that two weeks later, CM Punk will cut the evidence pipe bomb promo, and the rest is history. Anyway, that is two weeks later after this event. Anyway, let's move on to the next match. We got the, yeah, we got Randy Orton versus Christian. And this is for the World Heavyweight Championship match. This rivalry took place in the start of the summer, or really in the spring of 2011. After, like, Christian won the world title at Extreme Rules. Unfortunately, you know, he dropped the belt to Randy Orton five days on the SmackDown. They had the rematch at Over the Limit. This is Christian's first, or really his first pay-per-view match as a heel at this point. Because he turned on Randy Orton on a SmackDown week before this event. Said about it, turning, his, Christian was turning his back on his peeps. You know, and he wants to do this on his own terms, so... Anyway, this match for me is match of the night. For me. You know, like, for all the like, moments, of, really moments of the match, Christ, uh, like, Orton stopping Christian's repertoire, like, every time Christian was doing a, a, a high-flying move, he kind of got out of the way. Um, I think Christian, I think Orton kicked out the falling Vincent DVD, I think he... Yeah, Christian, yeah, yeah, you know, like, Christian, like, Oren did the D, his DDT on Christian, 
and he was trying to go for the RKO. Christian hit the um the full in uh, really did his DDT. Orton kicked out from that. Christian hit the spear onto Orton. Christian uh, Orton kicked out from that. And Christian was going for like a, a cross body, but Orton hit managed to hit the RKO onto Christian. Win this match. Unfortunately, Christian's foot was underneath the ropes. And then afterwards, Orton hits uh, Randy Orton with the, the World Heavyweight title belt. This set up the rematch at Money in the Bank. I read the whole bulk of the spring and the summer of 2011. You know, this has got to be rivalry of 2011 between Randy Orton and Christian. Really good match. Um, so let's move on to the next match. Um, the next match, we got Jack Swagger versus Evan Bourne. The match, the, the crowd do not care about this match. It was basically a bathroom break match, you know, to prepare for the main event match. Um, you know, you had like, you know, it's just nothing special. Uh, Swagger was going for, I think it was going, for, yeah, you know, um, Swagger was going, yeah, uh, Bourne was going for the, um, the flight, the, the flight airborne, but, you know, Swagger trying to count it into the, um, the gut wrench power bomb, but he managed to count it into the ankle lock. But Bourne also counted it into the inside cradle to win this match. That's it, man. It's just a bathroom break match, well, like I said. Okay, uh, before they get to the main event, the main event, uh, before, throughout, this, the, throughout the bulk of this pay per view, they had this um, fake personator, basically, this Brock Obama impersonator. And the, the, person, the personator who's doing this, Brock Obama, is a guy called Reg, uh, Reggie Brown. He's doing the whole. Personating of Brock Obama, they did like vignettes before of the weeks before the the built to this pay per view. Yeah, this yeah this was sucked. You know, see the personator of Brock Obama. I now understand he can't get the real Obama. This was a time when Brock Obama was the American president. Very boring. Frown, yeah, yeah, well, like you had this did the speech to the WWE uni universe. This this segment should be on Raw or SmackDown. Not on your pay-per-view that people are spending a lot of money. And then afterwards he did a spinning Rooney with Booker T. Let's move on to the main event. The main event, we got John Cena versus R-Truth. Like I started this, uh, this review, this is R-Truth's first, and really first and only, one-on-one -on -one WWE Championship match. Your R-Truth turned heel. It became this whole psychotic type of guy, you know, become he tired of rapping and... And dancing with the little Jimmys, he's you know like he's having fight what like he's having like all oh, like fight goals with Cena fans because he said about Cena is the propaganda machine and he's bang on there, like there was no build to this match between Cena and R Truth like one more like one match a week before Raw he had R Truth, like dr snatch a drink onto the onto a John Cena fan, and you know R Truth throw a drink into the dad of the Cena fan. That's the build up, and then also he did the whole, you know, Punk dressed up like uh, uh, Truth was dressing up like Stonewall Jackson. You know, you know, some people like it. For me, I find it so goofy. For me, you know, it was like, oh, little Jimmy, little Jimmy. I never got into it. That's for me. Yeah, this match between Truth and Cena, not a good match, to be honest, in my opinion. Just a boring match. It was sick. It was 15 minutes. I thought it was about 20 minutes, but it's 15, 15, 15 minutes long of a boring match between Truth and Cena. They are good workers, but there's no chemistry between Cena and Truth. I think like um, he hit the scissor, you know, Truth hit the scissor kick. He hit the hip toss. I think he hit the shut up, and he hit like this type of um, type of DDT stunner, or you know, he was going for like Seth Rollins' Black Arrow, but turned it into a stunner. Onto Cena, that was cool, but yeah, basically in the climax to this match, you basically our truth gone towards a Cena fan, took really took his hat, took his drink, he gave it back to the fan, the fan threw the drink onto our truth. Cena grabbed, really put our truth back in the ring, hit the AA onto our truth to win this match and retain the WWE uh, Championship, and Cena brought the the little fan into the ring. So, you know, like basically the Cena, really the little Cena fans celebrate with Big Cena. And then afterwards you had Cena was celebrating with front of the uh, military troops. And that's it. Anyway, so yeah, it's a damn shame for R-Truth. Um, like, yeah, the R-Truth after that was never the same. Yeah, that the next main event match for R-Truth was months later at Survivor Series with R-Truth and Miz. You know, like um, Arson Truth taking on John Cena and The Rock. 
And after that, R-Truth never touched the main event scene ever again. You know, if I do a 2011 um, WWE year review, I will do it in the near future. You know, get my, my thoughts on heel R-Truth, like, really, R-Truth first and only heel run at that time. So, anyway, so... Anyway, my final rate, my final reign for Capital Punishment 2011, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. People, you know, like, looking back, like, nine years in the future, people say this is the worst. No, it wasn't the worst pay-per-view. I think this was a, a mixed bag view, mixed bag. You had some good matches on the show. You got the opener between uh, Kofi and Dolph for the US title. Alex Riley of The Miz, that was a good match. Uh, Punk, Punk versus Mysterio, for me, match of the night for me is Randy Orton versus Christian. And, and yeah, a lot of crappy matches, like like Big Show and Del Rio was boring. You know, um, you got you know, Swagger and Bourne, it was just a bathroom break match. Cena and True for the WWE title was basically boring. You know, and we we'll see, uh, Barrett versus Jackson for the IC title was okay, but it's like, no one cared, so... Anyway, yeah, f and also the Brack Obama impersonator, it was just brought the show down. And also the uh, WWE's, uh, co the, the, capital, the Capital Punishment uh, set was cool. I put it in the good, so. Okay, that's my review on Capital Punishment 2011. Hope you like it. Leave a thoughts concept below. Smash the like button and subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. I'm going to leave you to the fans. Your pick, write down in the comment section below. Your, your choice are... One Night Only 1997, Invasion 2001, Backlash 2002, and Money in the Bank 2010. That's your choices. One Night, Stand, one Night, uh, one Night Only 97, Backlash uh, 02, Invasion 01, and Money in the Bank 2010. That's your choice. So, I'm the Central Man, officially signing out. Check you later.